I will admit, I've been working in Illustrator for 12 years plus, and I'm only just starting to see some of the potential for the blend tool. It's probably one of the most versatile tools within Illustrator, and you would really be doing yourself a favor by learning just a few of the things that you can do with the blend tool. Hey everyone, if you don't know me, my name is Martine. I'm a designer, illustrator, and do these YouTube videos from time to time, which I hope you find useful. So as I said, the blend tool is super useful and there's so many things you can do with it. So we'll be taking a look at just a few scenarios so you can start to see the potential of this tool and why it is important that you add it to your design arsenal. Let's take a look. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at is how to create color palettes with the blend tool. So if my illustration, I want it primarily say purple and pink, but I want all the variations of the in-between colors between purple and pink, I'll use the blend tool to create a palette and I'll show you exactly how we do that. So I'm just gonna get the, the square shape over here and I'm gonna select the first color that I want to be in my palette. Let's stick with purple and pink, or maybe blue to pink. So we'll go with a nice dark purpley blue, something like that. I'll just make sure my stroke is disabled, and then I'll just create a square, like so. And then I'm just gonna Alt, Shift, and click to duplicate the square over here, and this I want to be a nice bright pink. That is super bright. So the blend tool is, is a little tricky in that you have to set your parameters before it can be used. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go into edit. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go into object, blend, blend options. So here I have some, some options. We're just gonna be looking at one particular one for now. I'm gonna go into specified steps. And this is going to ask me how many steps do I want between this purple changing to this pink? I think eight is okay for now, depending on how in depth I wanna get, but eight is reasonable. So I'm just gonna go okay. So now our blend parameters have been set. So now when I select both of these squares and go into object, blend, I can make it. And now we have a perfectly formed color palette between this nice midnight purple and this bright pink. And blend is a live effect. So I can change this at any time. So say I'm not quite liking the shade of this pink and I want it to be a little different. Double click, select it, change the color. Uh, let's go with a more kind of red, darker tint. Press OK and it will update my entire palette. Super easy. And if I know that this is my final palette, and I wanna use it, then I'm just gonna select it. As you can see, it's treating this as one big shape. So we do have the option to go into Object, Expand, OK, and now Illustrator will treat these as separate shapes as opposed to one object, but you do lose the ability to edit your colors. Obviously you can manually edit, but I won't be able to do what I did before. So make sure that your colors are finalized before you expand them. And that's making color palettes in the blend tool. Now let's have a look at text again, because I know the majority of you are print on demand artists and text is always a biggie when it comes to making t-shirts. So let's have a look and see what we can do with text. So if I go to my text tool and again, we'll just type out text and we'll make that a little bigger and we'll pop it there. And let's just recolor this like so. And I want to create outlines. So in effect, what we're gonna do is we're going to create 3D text by having this 
text shape blend with another text shape. So let's duplicate this across by holding Alt, Shift, dragging it out. And we'll change this slightly. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. And let's color it maybe a darker blue, like so. And we're going to do exactly what we did before. I'm going to set my blend parameters because they're going to be different to the ones I set when I was making a color palette. So let's go to, to Object, Blend, Blend Options. So I still want to stick with specified steps, but eight is not going to do it. I want a nice smooth blend between both of my objects. So I'm going to have to up this up quite a bit. Let's try 300 and press OK. And now if I go to Object, Blend, Make. So we've got a few issues here. Firstly, this text is in front of this one. So we're losing, it looks a bit funky. So what I'm going to do is I'll double click, click on this text, right click, arrange, center back. And now we can see that a little better, but there's not much contrast between the two. So I'm going to come here and we're going to slightly change the color to make it a bit lighter. So there's more of a contrast between the dark blue and the light blue. We're getting there slowly but surely. And we can move this in real time. Remember what I said, it's a live effect. So we can move this text anywhere we want. We can resize it. So this is a thumbnail for one of my older videos, and this is the exact method that I use to create this thumbnail. So we can continue to just drag this, find out where, where looks best. And as you can see, because the blend is so smooth, we are losing this a little bit. And I've got a quick way to sort that out. So if I select this while we're still in isolation mode and copy it, and then go back to normal view and go control shift V to copy in place. And I'll make this text a little lighter, but it's not part of the blend. So it's not going to affect anything. So I'm going to make it a really light blue. And now we can see some real distinction between the front and the back. And we have a nice 3D effect. Just make sure if you start to see little separations here, it means you don't have enough steps. So it's breaking it up. So you've got to have a lot of steps to make that smooth because effectively this is 300 instances of this text going down. So if it's looking jittery, up the number of steps that you need to, to create that smooth blend between both sides. And that's how you create 3D text. And now, of course, we can start to make things like shapes. So I'm going to select my paintbrush and I'll just change my stroke to black so we can see. And then we'll just do a little. I'm sure you've seen some examples of people creating text using this exact method. So I'll show you how they do it. So here we have a little squiggly shape and I'm going to do exactly what I did for the color palette blend. And I'm just going to create a circle this time. And I'm going to give it a gradient. So we'll go to gradients and we'll change these up. We'll go with say this teal and so we've got gradients and I'm going to alt drag and click to duplicate it. So for this one, I'm going to make it maybe slightly smaller than the original circle. And then I'm going to select both. Remember, we're going to our blend options, but I think 300 will do for this particular example. But just in case, maybe we need a few more. So I'll go 350. OK, object, blend, make. So now we have this line that has a gradient attached and straight away. Remember, this is a live effect. I can go into here. Oh, let's just go to this. I, if I double click and I go here, let's rotate this a bit and see what happens. So now instantly we can start playing around with depth perception. 
perspective, shadow, highlights, all of that kind of thing, just by rotating that. But now we want to apply what we've done here to this line. So let's go back to our normal view. I'm going to select both. So drag out a box to select both of these, your drawn object and your blend. Go into Object, Blend, and this time I'm going to replace Spine. So effectively what we've done is we have put our blend onto our shape that we created. So let's zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, 300 was a little bit too little. Well, 350 was a little too little and we're starting to see the separate circles. So let me undo that and undo that. Okay, so, so we really want a nice smooth blend for this to work. So I'm gonna go back to my blend options and we'll up this to say 550. I think that'll be a little better. And then object, blend, make. Okay, so now let's try that again. Select both, object, blend, replace spine. And that's looking a lot smoother. Again, this is a live effect, so I'm free to go and fiddle around with this as much as I want. So if we take our direct selection tool, I can see that this is looking, it's not nice and smooth. So I can use my smooth tool to smooth that out a little bit and it'll update it all in real time. And then like we did before, I can select one of these, rotate it so you can kind of figure out where your highlights and shadows need to be. So I want the green to be on top because those are my highlights. I want the purple to be my shadow. So I can find a way to manipulate my blend so it ends up looking exactly like I want it to look. So again, at any time I can resize my circles and it will update in real time. So the blend tool, huh? Pretty awesome. So with just those replacing spines, 3D text and color palette methods, you can certainly start to see the potential and how much you can actually do with blend. So try it out yourself. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, I do appreciate it if you click that like button. And if you have any requests for future tutorials, let me know. I'm always looking for new stuff that's relevant to you guys to make. So please let me know. And I'll see you guys really soon.